Hello everyone, I'm back today to do another re book review, this time it's on a historical novel called Annex by Sharon Dodger. This novel is supposed to be about the secret Annex people, you know, Anne Frank and her family and the two other families together living with her. This one is actually quite a little different from the usual stuff you read from about her because this one takes place into the perspective of Peter Van Pels, the boy that she shared for two years together in, in the attic. So to know that this one would be a quite different cause from his point of view from reading this, it's actually a little bit different from what you would read from the actual diary. But let me just, well, I guess explain a bit background. So, the whole book, since it's in Peter's perspective, we see about his life. During the first few pages, you will see about how his daily routine, kind of, he, kind of, about what he does now that sense anti-Semitism ruling has kind of taken over his life, how he deals with it, and then what. What how he what he feels about when he heard that his his family will be moving with the Franks into the secret annex. Throughout, of course, throughout this whole book, you'll see because he's a teenager, you will feel anything that sometimes he doesn't just understand some stuff that may have happened. Other times he does know, or even of course, regular teen teenage conflict with this kind of stuff during wartime. Because throughout this book, we see he kind of has a love-hate relationship with Anne during the early most of the book, and that's where I feel people give them the most criticism that they seem to portray Anne in here as a very annoying, annoying teen girl. But if you read the actual diary, you'll see that it's, she often, for a while during the early times together. She seems to look down on Peter as being just another, well, kind of dopey person. So I would suspect that since they do kind of have the opposite personality-wise, he would also kind of look at Anne as more of a nuisance than a companion of sorts. In which, of course, this whole no this whole book also plays onto the accuracy a bit. In which we see the conflicts that happen between people being crammed together. We see how he is often the often dealing with how his parents never seem to get along, or that they're always arguing about him a lot. We see how he kind of grows, starts growing somewhat attachment to Anne. Even though, if you ask me personally, I I find that part in the book when the romance between them is kind of a bit boring to me, but. We see him grow as a person. We see that he kind of opens up a bit more. We see that he, while he still has some doubt in him, he does get braver a bit. He does stand up for himself. And of course, being a teenager, we do see some of his fantasies. This book has some moments of where he has dreams of being with the girl he truly loves. I, she was the only, she never actually appear to him, nor is she a real person, but there are some parts where you would think of kind of teenage sexual fantasy, but it's not to the point of being explicit, so you don't really have to, t adults don't have to really take precautions into this for giving it to a person. And then again, at the same time, this book really does get to move really moving because this is split into two parts. Part one is about him moving to the annex. Part two is about the aftermath after they were caught. And I would definitely say to readers, if you're going to read this, continue on. Once you get into part two, that's the, when things really get into a death, into a suspension bridge because we see Peter now in his final days because we know in real life he does actually die pretty close to the day of liberation, in the liberation of the Ashka, of his camps called the Holocaust. But 
even as you read it and you know what his fate is going to be, it always felt like, well, to me at least, it felt so close, like he was so close, he was just lying, just there, he managed to go through all that stuff, and he managed to escape the abuse by the authorities there, he managed to live still, and yet, he was so close, just there, and then only to know that he just lost it all. But he was at peace. So my ratings to this for accuracy, I would give it four out of five, four four and a half out of five because it really the Dodger really did stick kind of true to the whole historical event. Characters, I wouldn't really rank them because we already know what they are kind of like from Anne's perspective. So this kind of just goes along with that idea of how to portray them here. Other than Peter, everyone else pretty much stays almost the same way. For plot, I would say it's okay for a book that's a little over 200 pages. I believe it was over 200 pages. It was okay. I didn't really pay much attention to the romance part like I said. But everything other than that, I was okay with. And the book itself i like how it was formatted because each day it sounded more like it was each chapter is pretty much formatted to like a a date on the book like it was it was august 20th 1943 like that like it was formatted to look like it, if peter was actually writing in his own diary journal kind of i like that a lot I also really like that ending. It was just very moving. It's probably what I would say be the most memorable thing of the book. So it was just something. It's not something that I would say you would forget that easily, but it's something that really does stick with you and make you think a lot. Because I really was touched by this. I liked it. I don't get why people still give it a negative reaction, but for anyone who is interested in this, I definitely recommend this. Thank you for listening. Have a good day.